Red Cavern is a beautiful place to visit, with nearly half a million tourists each year that come to see the spectacular show of subterranean minerals. But did you know that the famous Carlsbad Cavern isn't the only cave in this national park? Mm, no, in fact, there are 120 limestone caves here, including one very special cave that most visitors aren't even allowed to see. It's called Lechagia Cave, and it provides pristine, unusual, and rare examples of cave formations as well as some fascinating microbiology for scientific study. Research on the extremophiles found here may someday save your life. We'll tell you all about the subterranean science today on Nine, Nine Worlds. Well, Carlsbad Cavern is a showpiece for public viewing. It's not the longest, deepest, or even the most beautiful cave in this park. It's true, the real treasure here is Lechagia Cave, a deep and stunning labyrinth with access restricted to scientists and survey teams. And amazingly, the treasure here almost went entirely undiscovered. In the early days of the park, Lechagia Cave was considered an insignificant historic site in the park's back country, a travel afterthought with little hint of the wonders it contained deep underground. Its only prior role of any significance was serving as a location for guano mining for about a year in 1914. So if you were one of the few who visited this cave before 1986, you would have found a small, unremarkable 90-foot pit serving as the entrance leading to about 400 feet of dead-end passages. It wasn't visited often, and no one really thought much about it. Sometime in the 1950s, park staff noticed wind coming up from the rubble at the floor of the cave. There was no obvious route through the rubble, but the airflow was barometric. This meant that the wind would rush in and out depending on changes in the atmospheric pressure. This suggested that there was a huge open space below the rubble. But at that time, most people really thought that all of the caves had been explored in this area. So it wasn't until 1984 when a group of cavers led by engineer David Allured got permission from the National Park Service to start digging through the rubble to see what was underneath. It took two years before these explorers broke through into the large passage on Memorial Day, 1986. And whoa, what they found in this formerly ignored cavern was spectacular, deep, long, and full of wonders. They immediately explored the first thousand feet or so until they hit Boulder Falls, which is an almost 200 foot deep pit. That's deep. That's deep. With cave winds howling at sometimes more than 50 miles per hour in their faces as they journeyed deeper, it was clear this cave was big. And since that first breakthrough, Lechigia Cave has grown significantly from its modest beginnings. As of this recording, it's currently measured at just over 150 miles long and 1,600 feet deep making it one of the 10 longest caves in the world and currently the second deepest in the United States. But it's not just the size that's impressive. Here, it's the treasure that keeps revealing itself again and again and again and again and again in this underground wonder. Here, you can find amazing and rare speleothems some of which haven't been seen anywhere else in the world. The Chandelier Ballroom has become an iconic location for its giant 20-foot gypsum chandelier and the largest known gypsum stalactites anywhere in the world. Elsewhere, you can find gypsum hairs and beards, 18-foot soda straws, lemon yellow sulfur deposits, cave pearls, and more. One of the most recent spectacular finds is a small, pristine cave pool full of crystal clear water surrounded by a white ring of minerals. A spectacular find, never before touched by humans, and it's not the only one. There are several other cave pools inside the Chia. The pools here are typically alkaline with a pH between seven and nine, and they often have few nutrients to support life. However, this doesn't mean that they are devoid of life. Instead, the bacteria inside this cave have to get creative to thrive in such a harsh climate. Down here, you find extremophiles. Extremophiles! In fact, some of the microbes found in the cave are so uniquely shaped by their development in this harsh environment that NASA engineers have studied the caves to understand whether similar life forms could live in harsh conditions like those found on Mars. For example, Lechagia is home to rare, rock-eating bacteria that feed on sulfur, iron, and other minerals found in the cave. 
These bacteria have likely influenced the size and shape of the cave, and are living in this harsh environment without direct support from sunlight to survive. Even more important for us is finding the microbes that have application in medicine, like bacterial strains that are resistant to natural antibiotics. Scientists have found a so-called superbug deep a thousand feet down in the cave that's resistant to about 70% of antibiotics. Now, antimicrobial drug resistance is considered an urgent global public health threat, killing 1.27 million people worldwide. According to the CDC, in the U.S. alone, more than 2.8 million antimicrobial resistant infections occur each year, and more than 35,000 people die as a result of these infections. So finding new ways to understand and prevent these is critical. But the bacterium found in Lechuvia has been totally isolated from the surface world for the past 4 million years. 4 million years. So it didn't get its resistance superpower from antibiotics overuse. Antibiotic resistance is a really bad thing when found in a bacteria that can infect humans. But this cave bacterium called Penibacillus isn't pathogenic, so it cannot directly hurt us. But it may be able to help us better understand how antibiotic resistance develops and what we can do to stop it. This finding means antibiotic resistance may be more of a natural phenomenon than we previously realized, an adaptation hardwired in bacteria's genes, understanding how and which genes code for the development of resistance may help us prevent it from occurring in germs that infect humans and eventually save lives. As research in the cave continues, more discoveries of extremophile microbes may help us treat other conditions, like cancer. But these microbes aren't the only way that caves protect your health. It's true. In fact, there's a much more basic way the characteristic features of caves may keep you healthy every day. As it turns out, 40% of our drinking water comes from these karst landscapes, so you may already be relying on the aquifers in these rocks for fresh water. Mom, maybe you can explain why karst is important and why it matters to water? We can't talk about caves without talking about karst. K-A-R-S-T, karst. So a karst topography is defined by several different features, one of which is the presence of caves, another is usually the presence of limestone, and here at Carlsbad, some of the defining features include limestone cliffs with pockmarking like those you see behind me. In other places like Mammoth Cave, you see the sinkhole plain, right? The golf ball divots in the landscape that you can really appreciate from drone shots that are up high. But what's really important to know about karst topography is that it's important to our drinking water. When water falls, it drains really quickly into these aquifers. And so if there are environmental contaminants, it will get into the water system very easily and very quickly. And so for everyone's health, safety, and well-being, it's really important we protect these environments and these aquifers in order to ensure their longevity and our longevity and health over time. This also means we need to be careful about containment around these karst landscapes. 98% of the groundwater in Carlsbad is groundwater from the Capitan Reef. Protecting the caves around Carlsbad also protects the groundwater. While Lechuguia is in a protected wilderness area, it's very close to BLM land where oil and gas drilling may occur. Now, due to the nature of these systems, this drilling could risk leaking gas or oil into the cave and the surrounding aquifer. If this happens, it could contaminate the water and destroy the fragile ecosystem living in the cave. The rare microbes that may bring hope for future medical breakthroughs would be lost, as would a precious natural resource. So it's important to manage the cave with a careful eye to protect these resources and minimize future threats. We're very glad you can join us on this adventure. I hope you enjoyed a lot of this fascinating stuff about Lechugia Cave. There's also a lot of medical stuff, but hey, Medicine is cool. Hope I see you on our next video. Bye.